hello everyone so welcome to this channel once again and in today's video session i'll discuss uh, external stored procedure that return cursor results so in my previous video i i uh, talked about uh, stored procedure which returns so this time i'm not this time i'm not going to uh, return array will be returning so will be returning the cursor result sets uh, from an external stored procedure so let's uh, move towards the demo so this was the example where uh, i'm filling an array and setting the result sets into the array and returning the array as an result set now this time i'm gonna returning the return uh, result sets as a cursor so uh, in case of array we can only return one array as a result set but in case of cursor we can return single or multiple so let's let me show you an example so this is the program which uh, accepts uh, field 1 which is an integer as an input and then what it does it queries uh, onto the file extpf1 and select the field 2 based upon the field 1 value which is uh, coming as an input to this program and then uh, we basically open the cursor since we need to return the result set so what we will be doing we will be setting the result set set result sets and we need to set the cursor as a result set. So cursor cur1. So we have opened this cursor cur1. So we are returning the result set as cursor cur1. And that's the end of the program. Now let's compile this. Just debug this. So before for debugging. Uh, we need to set the debug view as star source. So this program is compiled. Now the time is to uh, create or write the script. So this is the program uh, which has the script which uh, create the stored procedure which returns the cursor result. So, so the name is cursor result set which accepts input as field 1 which is integer and it returns result set as 1 so basically for this time I am returning only 1 uh, in my next example in this in the same video in this video I will be discussing uh, uh, for returning more than one result set language is RPGLE specific name is this so this is the uh, specific name uh, and this is the procedure name so uh, we can uh, have this specific name unique for every procedure and procedure name can be seen but the specific name must be different or it must be different for every stored procedure we have in any schema external name this so basically this is going to call that program which we just compiled not deterministic so the result would not be deterministic for every input every time we call that modifies SQL data so is it modifying SQL data here we can have only read SQL data or we can have modifies SQL data if we are going to modify some SQL data later on so we uh, so the minimum thing required here is reads SQL data parameter style is general we can have the SQL parameter as well where we are we can uh, we can return uh, we can have the parameter of SQL code or SQL state so this time uh, we are having general only and here I am executing this script to create the stored procedure so let me check if we don't have if we have any stored procedure with this name so I'm trying to drop that so I don't have that stored procedure so since this query is failed to drop that now let's do
we can check here so we do not have this stored procedure created see the created so just create this program and just call this so we so we can see the stored procedure is created procedure is created which is external and this is the external name rpg general no so this is let me show you the result sets as well which is one for this one now now let's call this so we can uh, call this from here so we are simply call using call statement and passing the parameter one as one here just call this proc call proc p job log f10 so we can uh, see we call this so we are not able to see job log right now so let's compile this with source call prop 8 So let's set the pick point. So this parameter value is one shift F10. We are in the program. Cursor gets opened and it gets returned. Let me show you the job log now. So you can see uh, one result sets processed by the set result set statement, one result set available from procedure this in library this. So we have one result sets available which we can uh, later on use in our any program uh, to get the result which is returned by the cursor. So this is the now end of the program. So let me show you the result set uh, which we have received. So I'm using run script script for that purpose. So I'm calling this call easy class one dot cursor result set. So we are passing one. So you can see for one we have this data. So if I pass two value, we have this data. So th these are the uh, file records having field one value is two any xgpf1 file so if i pass 3 we do not have such uh, record there so we will be we will not be getting any rows so records done so you can see g zero rows uh, retrieved here now this is the example where we are returning only one cursor result let me show you how we will be returning more than one result set as a cursor so what I would do, I would use the same program here. So 
so let me have this one curl two. This time I'm um, let's say I'm returning the full data. I'm returning full data. Curl two and for select one to two from this and open this cursor two. Now we need to return more than one result set here. Set result sets cursor cur one. So for multiple, just put a comma. Again cursor. In case of array, we need to write array and then colon then array name that array host variable. So here it's cursor. So, so cur two. So if you have any other comma cursor cur three or whatever name it is. so spelling was incorrect so this so this way we will be writing uh, cursors and uh, we will be returning more than one result sets as a cursor so first thing I need to drop that procedure which is already created and which returns one result set now let's compile this so I'm not gonna debugging this this time I need to change the script to so this script is going to be same the only thing change here will be the result set so this time I'm going to return two results so result sets two will come here and just compile this and then if we will see onto the law table, catalog table, we don't have this stored proc till now. Let's call this. Now check. So we can see that the stored procedure gets created successfully using that script. Now if I check the result sets here, so we can see this time this will going to re return two result sets which is available for any program once the result set is returned from that program so so same way I, I'll be able to call this from here I don't need to change anything from here it will now return two result set so I can call this program or either I can use this run SQL script utility to call this so let's see if I uh, if I call with parameter one, okay, so it's in use since I uh, what I did is let me uh, have sign off first. So let me drop this. So it was already dropped. What I'll be doing is I need to compile this with commitment control none. So this was compiled with commitment control none. Let me compile this too. Now let's check if there is any lock 60 pgm 8 Now there is no lock Earlier we are getting the locks on that program That's it is in use so we are not able to call that Now let's call call ext proc 8 to create that stored procedure so which returns two result sets which we can see that it is created now again check any lock so 
so they are no lock anymore now let's call this so this time it will return two result sets so you can see uh, we have now two result sets of label so the first result set is this one where we have passed value 1 so we have data test 1 1 a 1 2 1 b 1 3 1 c for field value 1 so we have field 2 this 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 rows and for the second one where we are returning all the rows from the tables so we have 8 rows available so if I pass 2 now you can see uh, I have uh, on the first result set cursor result set we have 2 rows and on the second one we have all the data that is 8 results 8 rows available so if I pass let's say uh, if I pass 3 so we do not uh, we do not have any data for uh, field value field 1 value 3 so we do not have any data return for the first cursor result set we have 0 rows and for the second one we have 8 rows so this way uh, uh, you can see that this time we are returning more than one result set uh, from the external stool procedure as a cursor so you have seen the demo for the same two so by this video you will be able to uh, write a code for an external stool procedure which uh, return uh, cursor result sets either one or more than one that is multiple so that's all in this video thank you and have a nice time